there's a lot of times where I've been at parties and I've been shot at, you know, and it's not because of me personally, but there was a person at a party that somebody didn't appreciate or didn't want there, and um, bullets fly. It is their reality. They come from South Seattle and the east side of Tacoma, neighborhoods besieged with crime, gangs, and drugs. These young people believe they can do something about that. Growing up in this kind of environment and neighborhood, I've always wanted to see a positive change. What chance do they really have of making a difference? Put an ear to their hearts and see life through their eyes. Their sense of pride is inspirational. We can all learn something from them. I was going towards a really troublesome path. I told myself and I vowed to myself saying I'm not going to be that. I'm going to be something better. I'm going to do my best to make some kind of change. This fall, in a Cairo 7 Family Connection special, we take you on a journey of transformation. For nine months, we followed two groups of special young people who are learning to shed the shackles of their surroundings. Ah, there are kids out here gangbanging and doing this and doing that and shooting each other and drugs and prostitutes all over the place. All these issues that arise, and we generally stop there. They are deeply immersed in a comprehensive youth empowerment program that will teach them to not only better themselves, but to become advocates of change in their neglected neighborhoods. Funding's being cut. Buildings are being shut down. What's that mean for all the people who are connected to that? It is a journey that will culminate with a trip to our nation's capital, where they will present to their congressional leaders a recommendation for improving their underserved communities. It's fine if something you want to change, like you want to change what's happening. All of you have started you put your first foot forward by getting involved in this program. They were once disenfranchised youth, shunned by the mainstream. Now they are learning they can have a seat at the table and a voice that matters. Back uh, a couple years ago, this area was definitely labeled as an area of danger. You didn't, you didn't really want to mess with McKinley because there's a lot, a lot of Mexican gangs. Chino Celadon Perez knows this because he was recruited to join them when he was just 14 years old. McKinley Park on the east side of Tacoma was notorious for gang activity. So what other kinds of stuff would go on here? Drug dealing has, has always been a big thing, issue. Usually drug deals, I remember I, when my friends would always want to pick up pot or something or somebody I knew, they usually, around the, if they were like, if I was in the car with them or, you know, if, we were hanging out, they're like, hey, let's meet up somewhere. Oh, McKinley, we're out. Chino says he never officially joined a gang. He was considered a trainee. I was on the tip of the blade of gangs. Like, I was in a way with gangs. I, I hung out with a lot of, you know, bad boys. And uh, that's what my mom calls them, bad boys. And it was kind of like, yeah, I rolled with you. So in a way, like, I wouldn't necessarily say I was official, but it was kind of like I was putting in work. But it wasn't long before Chino realized he was heading into an abyss that would be hard to climb out of. Life was trying to throw messages at me like, this is what's going to happen to you. You keep this up and this is what's going to happen to you. It got me to seek that improvement and that uh, self-help, self-motivation that I needed. And I sought it and I got it. Chino got it partly from a youth empowerment program sponsored by World Vision. If you have ever been called a racial slur, Please step backward. Dang. The program's goal is to inspire young people in 12 communities across the country to become advocates, if not leaders, for positive changes in their neighborhoods. Chino went through the program last year and says it made a huge impact on his life. It changed me drastically. It matured me a lot more. It, it definitely did. He liked the program so much, he came back for another year. During the next nine months, Chino and 20 other at-risk teens will immerse themselves in an intensive after-school curriculum that will focus on life skills, leadership development, and civic engagement. We're not going through this with the assumption you already know this. We're going through this because you need to know. They will produce their own short movies that will provide a glimpse into the lives they live. Last one. Make it a good one. And most importantly, they will research and present a formal policy recommendation to their senators and congressmen in Washington, D.C. All too often, disgruntled youth from vulnerable communities become apathetic, alienated, and angry about what they see around them. 
This program hopes to dislodge them from such complacency. I see a lot of my youth nowadays using a lot of drugs, a lot of illegal substances, being poverty, you know, poverty getting them. I'm like, I feel bad, you know. I was like, man, I have to, if someone doesn't speak up, who, you know, who, who's going to speak up?